I end up communicating to my mom that I need to, something needs to happen. I need, I need help. And my aunt and my mom take me to the hospital. And when we got there, the doctors couldn't figure out how to get her blood, her temperature right, to rise. And the nurse came to me and said, you need to say goodbye to her. She was always very athletic, but she would seem like she was always getting hurt a lot. I think it took me a couple of years to understand what cryo was. Because the definition of cold isn't what normally you think of as cold. It's, it can be anything below 98.6 body temperature. So I didn't, I didn't grasp it for a while. I didn't know how to protect myself. After my diagnosis, the next five years were just one major medical event after another. In some ways I was like, I can do whatever I want because I'm not gonna be here. But at the same time, I put all my effort into friends and family. If I don't recover in two days from a flare, then it's kind of like, okay, well, we really need to think about chemo. I tell people, you know, that I work for this woman who's a friend of mine and she has this disease and they always say, oh, like, poor, poor Eileen, like, and I'm like, oh no, she got her PhD and she got married. I mean, she has a, she does have a very good network and nobody came along and said, here, Eileen, here's a dog, or, oh, you need a dog. You know, she believed that she could get a dog who could help her specifically and took steps in order to do it. Many, many people die from cryo, but something changed in me with that experience of my heart stopping up in the snow, and I was determined to do things different. The kind of illness that I have is invisible. You can't see. It. So a hidden or an invisible illness is even harder for the doctors to understand because they can't see it. So the only person who's going to be able to tell them is me.